Welcome to the second episode of Talk Tesla Time here on the Tesla Lucky YouTube channel. If you already love Tesla, if you're thinking about buying a Tesla, or if you're just curious about electric vehicles in general, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell for notifications. All the videos we post are Tesla related. Now, Talk Tesla Time is our new series where we're gonna look at the three biggest news stories every two weeks for Tesla and also share an Elon tweet at the end. So uh, with me today is my friend Rob from Florida. Hi, Rob. Hey, Jen, how are you? Good, good. Thank you so much for being here. Rob is a news junkie. He reads everything. He loves Tesla as much as Carly and I do. And so he's going to pick what he thinks are the three biggest news stories. What, what, do you, what should we talk about uh, today, Rob? Well, the three things I gathered over the last two weeks were, were that there's been a change in the deposits for Tesla vehicles. Okay. I also listened to a Bethany McLean podcast which was quite interesting. Okay. And also some new news on Model Y, maybe ahead of schedule as far as production goes. Cool, let's get started. Topic number right. one. Yeah, number one. So the deposits for the Tesla vehicles changed uh, a day or two ago, I believe. Okay. If you remember, it was $2,500, which was a refundable deposit to place an order for a Tesla vehicle. They changed that to now it's $100 non-refundable. So it when you go- away from 2,500 down to 100, it was never any other amount? No. Okay. They just, yeah, they just changed it that way. And it's hard to figure out why there wasn't a lot of news necessarily about the reasons, but if you think about it now, they probably have more consistent orders and that $2,500, even though it was refundable, is a big hurdle for some people if they're going to be leasing and things like that. So mm -hmm. moving it down to $100, but making it non-refundable, I don't know if Tesla feels like people would have more skin in the game. But to me, it was super interesting just to see kind of how things evolve with Tesla. It's in my opinion, they're always just doing things. They're trying new things. They're trying to make it a better situation for the customers and for the company. It's still a new company. So all these learnings, to me, I just give them credit for always yeah. doing new things. Well, they must have done some market research that there would be fewer cancellations with a hundred dollar non-refundable deposit versus a higher amount that you know people could get back you know for any reason so uh it certainly will be interesting to see the impact that this has on their delivery numbers exactly yeah it's going to be an interesting thing to watch and actually the delivery the numbers are probably tied more to production aren't they now that i think about it but regardless it's still very interesting it, it is and it's just a new thing and this is what we're going to see as an evolution over time what's right, going right. to happen there's always going to be something new and to me it's just fun to watch a lot of the people that don't like tesla are going to complain and say oh they keep changing everything they can't get anything right but to me it's not so much about getting things right or wrong it's about the process and the adjustment and trying new things and seeing what the market holds when you're doing something completely innovative like what right. they're doing well, I did not know about this, so I appreciate you bringing it uh, to my attention. I also do not know who Bethany McLean is, so tell me about her. Okay, so Bethany McLean is one of my heroes. <laughs> She's okay. a fantastic author. She worked for Vanity Fair as a writer, so that's where she might be pretty famous for, but she also wrote the book on Enron, The Smartest Guys in the Room. She wrote a book on the financial crisis. Um, and she also wrote a book on fracking in America. Those are her three book, big okay. books. And now she has a podcast on Luminary, which I pay $8 a month to subscribe for just to listen to her podcast because she is kind of an expert on business, super smart, super interesting person. However, she is a little bit of a Tesla doubter, or I don't know what the right word is. And that's tough for me because she did write an article in Vanity Fair about Solar City, 
the way that Elon Musk kind of pushed through the purchase of Solar City, which I kind of agree on. But when she writes the article, she only t- kind of takes the negative side. She doesn't look at any of the positive. And she had a woman on that she was doing the podcast with that felt the same way about Tesla and has been a Tesla mm-hmm. hater, doubter, complainer, outsider, whatever you want to call her. Yeah. And uh, so she's not an Elon fangirl. Not an Elon <laughs> fangirl at all. Yeah. And, and the complete opposite. So I had to listen to a one hour podcast and listen to everything that they're saying and all the statements that they're making, it's, which is super difficult because yeah. every three minutes they're saying something and I'm like, well, that's not right. Well, that's not right. So at least 20 things that they said um, were incorrect. And it's because they talk about the past. So a lot of the things they talk about are things that have already been fixed which is a little bit frustrating, but I mm-hmm. wanted to just bring up three points that they brought up because Bethany is certainly somebody that's well-respected. Mm-hmm. And okay. the couple of the th- craziest things they said was, number one, both the women on the podcast hate driving. So to okay. me, yeah, exactly. It's like, if you hate driving- Well, maybe driving, if they drove a Tesla, they wouldn't hate driving so exactly. much. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm thinking, if you hate driving, why are you writing about Teslas? I mean, yeah. it's sort of, it it just didn't make a lot of sense to me. Also, they talked about autopilot being dangerous, which we all know autopilot is safer than people driving. And if you haven't driven in a Tesla and you hate driving, you're not going to understand that autopilot is safer you're going to think that autopilot is dangerous and so that's kind of a okay. uh, I don't know if the right word is ignorant but it's just you don't have the experience so you shouldn't really be commenting like that and believe me Bethany McLean is a hero of mine I look up to her on everything so I'm so disappointed to hear her say these things you know and, yeah, and then, the data is so positive um it, I understand people being afraid of it, but I mean, it's like, that's not Tesla data that we covered in our autopilot 101 video. Um, That's, you know, what was the source of that data? I'm trying to remember. Yeah, that was the uh, National Highway Safety Traffic Administration. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, so if you look, and she's a data person. I mean, her books are loaded with data. She gets it, but Um, it's just tough to hear it. And then the other third thing that they said that was crazy was that the Model 3 is not a success. You know, and they're kind of, yeah. They're everywhere. (laughs) We see them everywhere. (laughs) Yeah, it's so sad because they're sort of talking about the ramp up and the production issues that they had. And a lot of this comes from some employees that, um, that are unhappy with Tesla. So a lot of it is is based on that. Like they have these whistleblower cases that are theoretically, oh, Tesla's doing all these things wrong. So one of the interesting things that happened was, which I'm glad I listened to the end. It took me everything I had to listen to an hour and get to the end. But she asked a woman that she was interviewing, what would make you a believer? And she said, well, if they turn a profit, if the cars are working better, and if the employees are happy, So you and I know, and hopefully the listeners will know, that Tesla's going to be making profits. They're making money, but they're investing it in new factories and things like that. So you're not going to see a complete profit at the end because you're spending that money. But in the Shanghai Gigafactory, we just found out, it was announced this week also, that it's going to be about a 50% improved, a 50% less cost in the vehicle than in Fremont. So those vehicles alone are going to have a much improved market. So anyways, profit's coming. The cars are working better, right? Of course, there was trouble with the ramp up, but the cars are working better. People love their Teslas. We're not having the same problems this year as last year. So I just wish that she would go to a busy supercharging station and sit there for eight hours and interview 100 people about their Tesla cars or ask the Model 3 drivers if the car is a success or a failure. And I, I would be willing to predict that she would see a 98 or 99% um, 
approval rate in just real Tesla drivers in the middle of their day charging their cars. But anyway, maybe she'll watch this and maybe she'll think about that. I Maybe they will. I would you agree with know. you because... You never know. But, but uh, that's very interesting. And I am going to do some uh, searching on uh, Bethany McLean. I want to learn more about this uh, this woman, your hero. Thank you for enduring that uh, podcast uh, to share with us some of these insights. So You're welcome. what's up with the Model Y though? I, re- I, I know there's a lot of interest in the Model Y. I was talking to somebody yesterday who was, was building one on the website. I didn't even know you could do that yet. So this is going to, the Model Y is going to be here soon, isn't it? I think so. I think Elon, in this case, under promised and is going to over deliver. If you go back to the second quarter earnings call, they, he said fall of 2020. And also in, uh, for deliveries to start happening. And also when he did the autonomy day, he said the same thing. And in the autonomy day, there was only like 100 reporters and different people in the room. But the board of directors and some of the key people were in the front. And he said the fall of 2020, and they all kind of snickered a little bit. Because I think they know it's going to come earlier. And some things that have been happening over the last two weeks are there's been a lot of Model Ys spotted on the roads now. In in Nevada, at the Gigafactory, in Fremont, California, there's some spotted up in Washington State where they're doing a lot of testing and there's more Model Ys on the road. So people are seeing them out there and I think it's getting closer and closer. It would be kind of a shock if it took a year now that these cars are sort of out and driving about. Um, yeah, you know, that video that you sent me from Like Tesla Kim, I think they have a phenomenal channel, by the way, she does a really, really good job with the, um, the Tesla data. I watched that video that you sent me. I'm going to put a link in the description. But that was really like my first look at an actual Model Y. Um, and I was like really, really impressed with it. Yeah, I think people are going to really like that model. The Model 3 took on the sedan uh, market and did a great job. And then the Model Y is going to take on the crossover or SUV market. And I'm sure is going to have the same effect. So it's going to- I think that more SUVs are selling today than sedans. I I remember seeing that. It might have been in the like Tesla Kim video or somewhere else. That's correct. Exactly. And now they're ready for it. So there's 75 percent of the parts overlap and there's new space going to be available in Fremont now to be able to make the Model Y because they're going to make the the vehicles for China and Asia in Shanghai, right? Those were made in Fremont before and being delivered. So now there's going to be more space. Plus, they just uh, submitted, I think it was a little over a month ago, they submitted plans for the fifth assembly line in Fremont. Right. So they put that in. So that's why all these steps coming together seem like the Model Y is going to be available sooner rather right. than later. And hopefully that will give people an idea that, okay, they can meet their timelines and they will see that because 75% of the parts overlap, there's going to be margin in these vehicles. So maybe it'll put some of the doubters at bay. But it's very interesting to watch that coming out. I want to go to Fremont so bad. (laughs) Do the factory tour. Um, Definitely want to go there and make that happen. Uh, but, But ultimately, what's your key takeaway here with the Model Y update? I think this is a case where Elon is going to under promise and over deliver. And I think people are going to be happy because it will spur more orders. Some people don't want to put a deposit and wait and not know when they're going to get it. Now, if they know, okay, within six months, I could get a vehicle right away. Maybe they'll start saving a little more money or figure out a loan and things like that. So I think a lot of good things coming with the Model Y. And the Model Y deposit's only $100. Only a hundred. Only a hundred dollars. Cool. Okay. Well, speaking of Elon, I want to show our tweet of the uh, of the two week uh, period. Uh, Elon's sense of humor uh, is uh, is added again. Let me put this uh, tweet up on the screen uh, for everyone to uh, to see. Uh, and this is actually a retweet. Elon is like retweeting himself 
from almost a year ago, Elon Musk buys Fortnite and deletes it. And his first uh, tweet says, had to be done, you are welcome. And there's a really funny quote here saying, I had to save these kids from eternal virginity, Elon Musk. <laughs> um, that is hilarious. And uh, Carly actually uh, really cracked up at the uh, concept of the, the, um, the concept of Fortnite being deleted. She was like, good, it should be deleted. <laughs> so Carly and Elon are on the same page as it relates to uh, to Fortnite. I really don't have an opinion, but I think that that tweet is hilarious. So I like the direction they're going. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, we are working hard here at Test Lucky to try to create a fun and informative channel for new Tesla owners, for current Tesla owners, for people who just want to know more about electric vehicles. So uh, we would really, really love to hear your thoughts, your questions, your feedback. Please uh, don't be shy. Leave comments. We would, uh, we promise Rob and I will answer each and every comment. And we think that we all just have a lot to learn from the dialogue because things are changing and this is the future and it's here right now. So I uh, hope you have a great day, Rob. Um, and uh, thank you everyone for watching Talk Tesla Time. Goodbye. Bye.